When I mean four things that will shrink your plaque, I mean that three of them probably have to happen simultaneously. And the fourth is probably an additional bonus you can choose to use. Anyway, I recently analyzed six studies to see what research is currently out there to A, indicate if reversing arterial plaque is, well, even possible, and B, what can be done then? Well, allow me to point out that there are some issues with the research, but I'll explain why in a few minutes. And don't worry, we'll still be able to learn a lot. But if you have plaque buildup in your arteries, how exactly would your body remove the plaque? Well, there are a number of mechanisms that are offered in the research. So here we have an artery, and clearly we see an atheroma is formed. An atheroma being a plaque causing the artery opening to shrink, letting then less blood through. Okay, so now the researchers of these studies point out that in this atheroma, depending on the stage of progression, there is a mass accumulation of low-density lipoprotein particles. Those are the particles that carry molecules of cholesterol around the body to be delivered to different tissues. Additionally, there are many immune cells in the atheroma. Some of them have been turned into foam cells, which are, I don't know, you can call it like a bloated version of an immune cell that is attempted to clear away as many of these low-density lipoproteins, shortened as LDL particles, as it can. But once endocytosed, meaning taken up within the immune cell, the cholesterol particles often release aggregates of cholesterol molecules inside the cell called cholesterol crystals. This leads to greater activation of the foam cell, thereby leading the cell to recruit even more cells through molecules it secretes called chemokines. Anyway, more of the immune cells come and they too get trapped within the atheroma, trying to clear out cholesterol. The process goes on for years, decades even, and the atheroma grows. So the researchers point out that a number of things are thought with varying levels of evidence to improve the situation. For example, we've discussed low-density lipoproteins that get trapped in the atheroma, but there is another lipoprotein particle called an HDL, or high-density lipoprotein, and it does not get trapped in the atheroma, but it can interact with it, thereby clearing some of the cholesterol crystals found in these trapped LDL. Essentially, it picks up the cholesterol molecules and leaves the atheroma, reducing the cholesterol burden. Beyond that, though, there is a growing focal inflammatory issue, as we just went over, right? I mean, the foam cells and all. Well, there are a number of ways of reducing this local inflammation. One, with the reduced cholesterol burden, fewer macrophages, those are immune cells, are then needed to clear out the remainder, so fewer chemokines get released. Additionally, immune cells clear out the dysfunctional immune cells, the foam cells, by phagocytosing them, meaning that they literally consume them and destroy them. This is made possible because of the inflammatory milieu is then lowered. The macrophages switch their behavior from a more pro-inflammatory state to an anti-inflammatory state, meaning that they secrete molecules, cytokines, that dissuade other immune cells from entering the region, as well as continue to consume in a regulated manner the content of the atheroma. Because of this switch, macrophages and other immune cells emigrate from the atheroma, further diminishing the size of the atheroma. However, it's also believed that one of the prerequisites for this process is the lowering of LDL levels in the blood. Otherwise, the HDL recovery and the macrophages becoming less inflammatory can't outcompete the constant burden of LDL getting trapped more rapidly than it can be eliminated. And speaking to that elimination, it can be done directly by the immune cells or it can efflux itself, leaving the arterial wall and re-entering the bloodstream. So mechanistically speaking, there are a few mechanisms that indicate atheromas can be reversed, but the body likely, and that's a key word there, likely, because there's a whole lot of research needed on this topic, the body likely needs low LDL levels a reduced inflammatory state, and some level of HDL involvement. But there is some additional information that might help us make sense of how to approach this. For one, in one of the studies, the researchers pointed a finger at blood pressure being a major factor. If we look at this data from this study, the change in blood pressure is on the horizontal axis, and the more on the left, 
the more the person has lowered their blood pressure. The vertical axis is the amount of atheroma regression. So the lower down it goes, the greater the reduction in plaque. As you can see, the greatest drops in blood pressure are linked to the greatest change in artery wall thickness, meaning improvements in plaque. But I should caution that this data that we just went over is a correlation. It should be interpreted that plaque regression tracks with blood pressure improvement, but it does not prove that blood pressure improvement would actually cause improvements in plaque. I can already hear someone commenting, are you saying that blood pressure then doesn't matter? No, I'm not. Lowering blood pressure is still a positive for heart health. We're talking about a very specific scenario here. It's even possible that blood pressure reduction did cause this effect, but this data simply doesn't prove that, that's all. Okay, so let's return to your artery for a moment because there are some specific effects of blood pressure on your artery. Your artery is lined with this single layer of cells called endothelial cells. These endothelial cells serve a number of functions from blood pressure regulation to inflammation. And it's this last mention, inflammation, that is drastically changed when your body is suffering from chronic high blood pressure. These endothelial cells will change their gene expression patterns from being a regulatory cell to being more inflammatory, which means that it will experience increases in oxidative stress. It will secrete more chemokines. Remember, those are the molecules that attract immune cells. And it will express more immune cell binding proteins known as leukocyte adhesion molecules. So immune cells can interact with endothelial cells and invade into the layers below, thereby increasing the number of pro-inflammatory immune cells in the developing atheroma. So yes, blood pressure has direct effects on atherosclerosis, the progression of plaque growth. So that means that blood pressure is probably important here too, even if it's impossible to tease out in the available data that we have on reversing atherosclerosis directly. Okay, so we understand some of the mechanisms of different actions, and although we can't pinpoint one action as the atherosclerosis reversal factor, there are some trends across these studies and reviews. So one, lowering LDL and probably more accurately ApoB levels, which is a protein on the LDL particles to begin that efflux from the artery. Two, reducing blood pressure, especially systolic, the top number on the chart, to deactivate the endothelial cells from a pro-inflammatory state. Three, weight loss, if possible. I realize that we didn't discuss it this directly, but this applies across multiple fronts. Weight loss reduces systemic inflammation, reduces blood pressure, reduces ApoB, and the studies that had the most robust reversal of plaque shared a common trait of participants, that is losing weight. Now, that's three of four, and technically, those three alone have been shown to associate well with reversing atherosclerosis. You could emphasize HDL as well, but that was less enunciated in the studies that I analyzed, so I'm keeping it on this short list of three so far. Now, the fourth and optional factor is exercise. We'll touch on why it's optional, as well as why exercise is the perfect topping to this ice cream. Okay, probably not the best analogy uh, in this particular video. Let's just say it's good stuff for the arteries. Exercise has prominent effects lowering blood pressure and modest effects on lipoprotein levels and weight. But the effects extend beyond the areas that we discussed. For example, exercise actually increases blood pressure for a short period of time during the session, which might sound bad considering that we just discussed how the effects of high blood pressure on the endothelial cells, but it turns out that exercise is transient increase in blood pressure and the faster movement of blood flow across the endothelial cells creates shear stress that coaxes the endothelial cells to release anti-inflammatory molecules, as well as nitric oxide, which opens up the artery, thereby reducing blood pressure long term. If you're interested, I can go into more details on the mechanisms, but this analysis describes some of the positive effects. So if it's so great, why is it optional? It's optional because there's some evidence of plaque reversal without exercise. So I would be lying if I said that it was necessary. 
It's not. But there's plenty of evidence that it is helpful across the board. So if you feel up to it, it is an unparalleled supplement to the others. But one warning, assuming that you have developed some degree of atherosclerosis, you should do a stress test with a medical professional to make sure that your arteries are currently capable of safely implementing exercise. This is very important. Now, as for the types of exercise, there's so little research on the topic, but what is available centers mostly around cardiovascular exercise, hence the name, like steady state, i.e. Uh, walking, jogging, biking, or even more intense versions like high intensity interval training or HIT. There's so much more research that needs to be done to pin down all of the most important components and the best exercise interventions. So this is my best stab at it based on what we have at the time of this recording. But if you'd like to see my full analysis where I show you the data and give you even more information on the mechanisms, check out my full analysis right here. It provides many more details than I can go over in this shorter video like this. I'll see you over there.